Welcome to the Hampton Beach Village District Monthly Meeting. It's Wednesday, September 14, 2016. Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everybody stood, put their hand on the heart. I guess it's, we're not, we're not, uh, no, kneelers. no kneelers. No, it's like a knee, nice to see. <laughs> All right, before we start, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to take a moment of silence. The precinct lost another member. We've had PCC. Um, Ursula Miller from I Street, she passed away. She was a longtime resident. So if we could just take a moment of silence. Thank you. All right, we don't have a lot on the agenda, but we, we're going to have Mike O'Neill come up and give us a little uh, um, overview of the parking lot this summer. How we did? We did well. Uh, this is the first year that we operated actually three different parking lots. Um, the newest one being the clue known as the old clue property. Our revenue overall uh, was up about 3.5% over our previous years, over the previous year. Um, we had a few glitches during the year. Uh, we continued to have a problem at Brown Ave, but by the middle of the year, we get, Brown Ave being the old nightclub mm -hmm. uh, area, uh, we need to put a light in. Uh, we had a couple of cars that were broken into oh. during during the year. Uh, there was a light there, but not sufficient enough, even though it's right next to right the next police station. station. <laughs> uh, overall, I think we had a pretty good year. Uh, Seafood Fest was a little bit down this year yeah. uh, in parking uh, revenue, uh, both in the vendor end and in general parking. I think part of that was due to Sunday. Uh, Friday night, Friday and Saturday kind of held their own. In fact, Saturday was a little bit better, but uh, Sunday, I think the weatherman killed the day for everybody yeah. by his predictions. Yeah. They can make or break us. So right. <clears throat> uh, overall, uh, weather-wise, in general for the summer, it was probably the best weather summer we had. We had uh, 27 days of 90-degree weather which was kind of set a record for us. What is the, what, what, so we're going to be open this lot here. Right, With this lot, we shows. will operate this lot here for the shows in September and October. Uh, we'll operate the Clues lot for the, for the big road race this weekend. That's the race. The Reach beach. the Beach. That, Reach, Reach, Reach the Beach, the beach yeah. uh, race this weekend. Uh, we may also open that. We're trying to figure if it's worthwhile to open it for the marathon. Smutty Nose. With Smutty Nose Marathon, which I think is the first weekend in October. Yeah. The second. <coughs> second of October. Second of, second of October. The, they may change their site again this year. Um, they're talking about moving everything to the north, up by Island Path and Church Street. If it, that happens, that has a effect on the on the lower lot. Would we'll definitely open up the other two lots on Brown Ave and Fire Station. There isn't any space for them at that end, I don't think. Um, I mean, where would they have their tents and everything? They put a tent up on Island on the Church Street parking lot, from what we hear, oh, and that wow. will be their registration site. <laughs> Last year, they put it in the Island Path oh, lot. I don't know that. So overall, I think we're pretty pleased with what happened for the year. Great. And any other, we had some lighting issues. We're going to shut one of the lights and change it or something? We're in the process of working with Unitel to reconfigure the lighting at 
Clues lot. Uh, they had an engineer in on Thursday of last week. We may come up with a di different configuration for lighting in general. Okay. Maybe some lower lighting. Of course, I got calls that said, we love it, it's so lit up and we can see it and it's so safe. And then I get calls, oh, it's too lit up. Right. It's too lit up. Can't, so we, can't please, we can't please everybody. So I, 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 we've we got to try to find that happy medium right. so everybody's happy. And um, fortunately, down here, the only people that see Actually, down is, here, we, we... Is the uh, casino parking lot and the, yeah, right. and the police station. Well, and out. actually, we, with our neighbors at the motel, we've not had a problem either. Okay. You know, and that way, this lot, this lot here is well lit. The problem that we have, we're not doing overnight parking at Clues this year. We did not do overnight parking at Clues this year uh, because we wanted to test the environment this year. We probably will go into overnight parking next year down there. So the seasonals, the people that rented weekly. They, they, the people uh, that rented on a seasonal basis did not use their parking spaces believe it or not, except for P Street. But uh, the <coughs> occupancy of the other uh, eight, uh, six spaces was about 25%. They paid for them. They just they like to know them. they have them when they need them. Yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah, yeah well, we were really surprised. How many spaces surprised. was that about? Uh, six of the ten lease spaces were not used. Not used. They, when I say not like used, they the were Adam used. Section, or where were they? They going? were used Fourth of July. Oh, they yeah. were not used Seafood Fest, wow. which really surprised. They me. just have them for their company, probably. Yeah, a lot of the of the six, four are condo owners. Oh yeah. Up on the front, and I think they bought them as backup because they only get. My understanding is they only have one parking space yeah. with each unit. I think they bought it for visitors. Okay. Nice. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Mike before he goes? Of course. I just, I just <laughs> want, no, I just want Mike to tell everybody um, that first of all, for the commissioner's sake, he's taking care of turning off the water at Clues, okay? Right. And as well, perhaps you could mention um, that the lights on both or all parking lots are on a seasonal. Right, and they so go off November 1st. Okay, and I wanted to make sure that people know that all those lights will go off. They go off November 1st and come on May 1st. Okay, okay. okay great. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, my name is Andre Bullier. I live at Five Hill. Yeah. Right. And um, the, the, the lighting for that parking lot, the high-intensity lighting, is way, it's, it's for a 50 car parking lot, it's, it's an overkill. I think that the, the, I have pictures of the lights that are shining on my deck. I can't even sit on my deck because it's a blinding high-intensity okay. light. Right. We, we you can't have I have been talking to about it. And we actually brought some pictures just so you can oh, see. Oh, no, I've, I've been lights. down there. I've seen it. So we're working on that. Yeah, that and I appreciate that, Mike. I, I'm glad you said something about that. It, it's, you know, but I got, my problem is that I've got, my whole house is lit up. I, got, I can't even have people in my guest room because it's daylight in my house all the time. I think if we try to do something lower lighting, so it's I getting asked, the, I that, we, that we work. So I wanted you to check at the hotel what I did over my pool area. I looked at yeah, and, I, and it really brightens it up, but it's 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 really soft, so that might work. Something like that. All right. Last year they had a deflector on the, on the light on Shuttle Street, which kind of helped out a lot. And this year it was removed. The attendant told me that it fell down. Reason why reason why the deflector was removed was there was a <laughs> on Tunnel Ave, on Tunnel Ave, the lady was complaining because people were using you know to the right of where you are yeah. as a bathroom facility from do, from do, nine do, yeah, do. from nine to ten o'clock at night. So we, we just kept trying to adjust just like we are working with Unitel to try to, I mean, they've had an engineer. And the bathroom situation is not just for your area. That bathroom situation is all over the beach. I'm, oh, yeah. I, I'm, oh, yeah. So I'm it's not. People feel they can come into our area and just do anything yeah. they want. They no, but they do it to everybody. It's not no, just your area. I mean, I, I have them right, right, oh, it, right behind have the it. hotel and everywhere. We have it right here. In, we have it in both of our other two it's, lots. Yeah, it's definitely an issue, and that's why. One of the reasons we push the state to keep the bathrooms open a little later, but most people don't care. 
Yeah. I'm going to have to be like the, the priest and announce no That's cell phones. Right. First of all, Bob, now you're doing it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. I, think that, I mean, that, those are pretty high intensity lights. One light, I think, would like the whole parking lot. I think we just have to change the style of lights. They're not as high intensity as you think. They're only 1,000 watts. Well, take a look at the picture. <laughs> oh, I have. <laughs> I've, been, I've been there at night. <laughs> Take one of these lights, though. You need one at ground speed, right? You can take one of Seriously. these lights. But take that one. Can we just shut that one off for Sorry, now? Look at these pictures. Well, I believe you. I've, I've driven down there. Yeah. Shut the pictures. I've been there at night. <laughs> and like I said, we got people calling us, thanking us for lighting up the area. So it's kind of a, we get it from all sides. So. You can't win for losing. Which we felt pretty decent. Don't. If you went with a higher intensity light, just one that bad that borders on my property there, the one be, the one that's in the middle of the white fence. Yes, if you went with a higher intensity light just there, uh, this is a everything would be stuff. shining down into the yeah, I mean, it made such a problem with my complaints about what are those other two people in the yards that we let them up, and now you know, one up does it the other. You know what I mean? It was pro we had problems in that area. That's why we did it. But the people that you turn into your driveway there, where the other one at on top. Yeah. Okay. Well. And that way. Okay with us. Save us money. No, no. Have them shine onto Ashworth. Onto Ashworth. And that would be it, though. Would be the only lighting. That would be three. Three. So the one in the middle. So the one, the two on the two ends. Yeah. They would switch them to the back. That would that would actually that would solve all of our problems, I think. Yeah, but then the other guys on the other side were going to have some really uh, too much on the other side, except. Yeah. Uh, if friends, you guys ask that, yeah, that you can control that lighting so that that so that it ends pretty much at last with. All mean, right. If you angle it down enough, Chuck, you, right. you can control it. On that. I mean, if it lights up Ashworth, as long as it's not lighting up the houses across the street, right. uh, there's, there's there's only one house, and that house actually. Is on P Street, the okay. base of P Street, yeah. not Ashworth. All right. Well, I, I thank you guys. Thank you very yeah. much for uh, hearing our complaints. Yeah. No, we've been we've been listening. We've been working with it. We're trying to figure it out. So I, I do want to add one thing. Um, I don't know if those are those energy efficient lights. <laughs> I'm just asking. <laughs> Well, no, I'm just well, asking. Sun in my, in sun in my, in my yard. Okay. No, the reason I'm asking is that those lights. You could maybe they rent cost, out the porch. For they them. cost exactly. about. Oh, it's I'm about, sorry. It's about five hundred dollars a month for us for the lighting, Is just the lighting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and that's that's expensive as far as. There are a thousand watt uh, candle power lights. All of our lights are a thousand. That's a lot. That's a lot of light. Yeah. A lot of light, and, but just so that for the record, it's, it costs about five hundred bucks a month for that. Could you explain just a little bit for the audience? Uh, the leasing program you started? Sure. You mean at the... Uh, at Clues? Both at, at Clues and yeah. actually what we do is uh, on, Bra on Brown Ave, what, what we refer to as the uh, Royal property here right here on the corner and thing. And at the Clues lot, we lease spaces for $650 a year. It's a, the best bargain on the beach. A season. A season. Six hundred fifty dollars for the season. Not well. It's season for me is the year. But yeah. <laughs> no, but we don't want. No, we don't do winter plowing, parking. We're not but it, the yeah. season goes already, from the first of May until roughly Columbus Day. Right. And um, it's it taken off, and we're at the point now where we got to we're trying to maintain a delicate balance between income and filling the needs because if we load it with seasonal people we will not meet our income goals at all because we don't hit with a lease space we can't turn it over but we turn over the parking lot on a good day at least three times so if you maintain uh, at the clues lot our capacity is 45 cars uh, and we have 10 leases, so we actually have 35 turnover spaces there. Um, and it's at the, we're doing much better at the end of the year than we're doing at the beginning of the year because people found out that there is a parking lot at that end, especially 
the old Whites Island area mm -hmm. people, those people have all of a sudden discovered this parking other than at the state park. And we're getting uh, very good use. And also now, uh, M-N-O-P-Q, that area is also uh, picking up. Well, it makes sense. Plus, we have the houses right there. We have three uh, uh, three business establishments, plus four hotels in that area. And that's why we're looking at maybe going back to the overnight parking. You mean in the closed area? Yes. Oh. Right. There's been a demand. There is really a demand for overnight parking because right? yeah. you have okay. one, two, three, five, ho five hotels. And now the policy at all of the hotels on the beach is one room, one car. Yeah. One space. One space. Yeah, it's always been that way. Okay. <laughs> yes. If you go to overnight parking, how, is that, how does that work? Is they, is they going to be able to be able to come in and out all night long? They no, what, they, they can get, well, technically they get a space for the night. Okay. They can come in after 3.30 and have to be out by 10 the next morning. Okay. So for the most part, it's this going to be for the most for the most part, people will park their car and and be gone. And be gone. All right. We have people that come for the week with an extra car. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know why they bring it. And they, a lot of the motels okay. and they uh, they leave it here the whole week. They don't move it, so they move the one from our lot. My only concern is that it doesn't become a party place. It's very popular. Well, I and we say to the neighbors and feel free. Call it. We've worked with the police. Yeah. Just call them up and they'll they'll be down. They've been they were there uh, Friday night of the seafood fest. Yeah, they were playing football out there at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah. I saw them. You were playing with them. <laughs> our, our watchdog well, goes to work at three, so she lets us know yeah, what's going on. Well, I go to work. Yeah. What was the spread? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't had a coffee yet. <laughs> but the police, you know. I I get a call from the police or from somebody. I call the police, then they'll call me back and say, what's happening? So there's a little difference between the overnight parking and the release parking. Yes. The overnight, you say, the overnight is $25. But it's from what time? From 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I understand why. They coincide with the checkout time. The release parking is $25. So I'm sure it's done in August. I really don't understand that. I mean, the it's state the charges fourteen hundred for a spot, up to two thousand now. Oh yeah, I think it's different depending on where you're at. Yeah, yeah. further away, but yeah. celebrity parking. So, eighteen hundred. Yeah. So why would we charge for a little? Well, the reason we did it was for the village district owners. We didn't want to, like, the state is. Tucking it to everyone. We don't want to tuck it to everyone. So that's why we, we haven't been we haven't gone up. We haven't gone we haven't gone up. And it's something we're taking a look at this this year. We might go up because a little bit. I don't want to go. Six dollars and seventy five cents a day. Yes. If you pack for the week. That's a pretty good deal. Considering most of the packing is minimum of ten. Yeah. The pack our packing range, just so everybody knows, is ten to twenty five dollars. And the only time we charge twenty-five dollars was Fourth of July. Other than that, we're at ten dollars on weekdays, or fifteen and twenty dollars on Saturday and Sunday. Or if it rains, it might be five. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. All right. Thanks, Mike. All right. Do we have any old business, Maureen? Yeah. I do. Um, John, are you going to speak? Okay, so my, you know, I just want to talk about how um, I'll talk about the Children's Week. That was a big success thanks to the Chamber of Commerce. And Cheryl uh, Ailes, Julie London, Barbara Brow, David Gooch, Mary Mullen, Judy Flaherty, Doc Noel, Terry Smith, Diane Patriots Connor contributed a lot of toys this year, didn't she? Beverly Hollingsworth, and of course, our beloved Uda. We did so much and we thank you. Don't forget Glenn. I, I oh, no, I'm not thanking Glenn. No. <laughs> Why should I thank Glenn? He organized the Continentals to play for the parade. But he didn't even drive. Oh, and Tommy Higgins drove the Continentals in the parade. 
Yeah. They didn't ask for me again to drive? No. And, and, oh, I, I already did that. And yeah. Justin, too. Was she there, Ann? I'm yes, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else I missed? Right. Ann Justin. Yeah, thank you, Ann. I, I said that. You need to pay attention. <laughs> um, also, Hampton Talent on August 26th and 28th. We had some serious talent there. And uh, I want to thank the sponsors, Woodwalk, Cascade, Purple Urchin, Ocean Walk, 401 Tavern, McGurk, Sea Catch, Harris Sea Ranch, and the Catfield Properties for uh, their support that they give us every year. And Labor Day was cold, but the reminiscence came, and it's just a delight. I enjoy it. I don't know how many people. There was so much fun. And uh, was, they had a good crowd, but um, it, I liked the weather the, the year before better. It was warm and wonderful. And that's all I have to say. That's it. Yep. How about you, Bob? Any old business? I think we should thank Maureen. She probably does more hours of volunteering than everybody combined. She's never met an opportunity to work that she's refused, <laughs> and it isn't because of the pay grade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, heavy so, money. Yeah, she, I'm just so impressed. This talent show that she puts on with Glenn yeah. is incredibly time-consuming prior to the event and three days of the event. There's countless hours going into this, and I don't, I, so I just want to get it on record. Thank you. I see more of Glenn than I ever dreamed. Yeah. All right, Glenn. It's this is Glenn, too. Thank you very much. Thank you very pleased, much. pleased to take credit for that this is very much a collaborative effort. It is indeed. With this committee, and that's Maureen and Julie. And I mean, I don't make a decision, although... They wouldn't let you. No, he can't make a decision. I was just going to say, no, you're not allowed. That's my point. <laughs> I, it was just a great show. Everybody was talking about it. Oh, good. So I'm glad. Good. I'm really glad. Great talent. All right. New business. Bob? Yeah. The town planner asked me to announce that on Wednesday, September 14th, which is tonight, at 6.30, if at 6 okay. to 7.30, at the Lane Rimey would be a flood preparedness workshop. Assuming nobody will be leaving here and breaking the speed limit to get there, there will be a second opportunity to to attend on Wednesday, September 28th, at the police station training room, 100 Brown Avenue. That's across the street on the second floor, and the time will be from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. The topics that will be discussed are flood hazards, floodplain regulations, flood insurance, and flood protection, and things you can do to reduce your at-riskness. Now, the only further thing I would say about this is I think it's wonderful the town is offering this workshop. <coughs> and I think people should consider attending it even if you're not in the floodplain. If you watch what's going on around the country weather-wise, there are a tremendous number of flood losses of properties which are not in the floodplain. Louisiana may be the most e recent extreme example of 60,000 residences being lost or damaged by flood, but almost none of those were in the floodplain. So it, it isn't necessary to be in the floodplain to protect your property with flood insurance, and if you're not in the floodplain and it's your primary residence, it's not that expensive. Well, so Bob, who's putting on this? The, the town, uh, actually the town planner. Okay. And he will be there, and I assume the Somebody from Rocky and Planning okay. Commission would probably be there. All right. I didn't hear back from Jason about our November meeting. I asked him if they would come. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you hear from him on that by chance? Yeah. Yeah. Jason and Julianne LaBranche will be at our November meeting to bring us up to date on where we're at with getting into the community rating system. Uh, this program they're offering now actually gets you some points toward credits to get into the rating system which reduces your insurance premium somewhat. Uh, so they will both be here in November, and I would encourage people to either attend or at least watch the taping of the meeting afterward. Not it? Yep. Okay, um, next October, our meeting, instead of being at 5.30, will be at 4.30. So it's October 12th. There is a special uh, celebration for Senator Stiles that she's retiring. 
and uh, we would all we want to go. So we're having an earlier meeting and not expecting a lot on the agenda. So uh, if you. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so next month, October 12th, will be 4:30, not 5:30. And I've already approved it with 22, and we'll we'll get it posted on the uh, website, John. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. So, um, approval of minutes. We have we have uh, approval of minutes from July 13th. Approval minutes of August 10th. So we'll start with July 13th. I have a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I will move to approve them. Do I have a second? Would you repeat the question? <laughs> Just say second. Okay. I'm sorry. To approve Please the minutes me. as, oh. as, of as July? July 13th. Got it. Now. You see how difficult it is, I mean, No, it's, I was very important question was asked by our secretary. But <laughs> we're waiting. A second. Oh, oh, I second. <laughs> All in favor? In the head notes. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to approve the minutes from our August 10th meeting as presented. I move to so approve. And I will second it. Um, All in favor? I have to abstain. You have to abstain. You wrote them. That's right. <laughs> I took them. Two and one abstain. Okay, so that was it there. For a minute, public comment. Anybody else want to say anything? She said it first. <laughs> My name is Uda Penyo, I live on 15 Title F. I have two things to say today. One is the children's coloring book. A lot of people don't know about the coloring book. I gave a few out to customers, elderly customers who come here every year. They didn't even know it existed. I looked through it. I don't know if you guys can make changes. How many do you have left? John from the golf miniature golf course is one of the sponsors, lets the kids play for free. The pirate is missing. It should be in the book. Oh, I thought you meant the pirate itself was missing. I was wondering if it was down your place. The pirate place. in the so book is that? missing. It should John be in the book. Wants to, wants to be in the book. Okay. No, it didn't no. say he yeah. wants to. I said he should be in the book. He's a sponsor. I mean, he lets the kids yes, play for I free. Yes, I he does. You're absolutely right. Another thing is I have a question. I don't know how much it costs to print them up. And how many do you have to buy for a printing? Is it, is it possible that um, stores and restaurants either sell them on commission or buy them and sell them in their stores? Because I believe there is a demand for it. I don't want to sell them. I'd rather give them away. I would. However, I, I, I've been toying with this. Um, How about giving certain, certain uh, restaurants or hotels um, a stack of them in, in exchange for a donation. Exactly. Or perhaps a sponsorship on the sponsor page right. that we have in it. I, I've been toying with that. Um, I received a, a, a request for them uptown recently at the, I'm not sure what it's called, it's that Depot Square yep. breakfast place. And um, I, I'm considering, I, I just haven't figured out, and we haven't discussed yet, what exactly that donation should be. I was thinking of a sponsorship that would be on that page is a page for sponsorship, yeah, yeah. and anybody that because I, I I'm not sure how much it would be, and, and we will discuss that. And I you know to to help to defray for the cost right, of the coloring, the books. printing, right, right, yeah, or any changes like you say, right, additions. I'd be interested. You'd in, in, be interested in what? And being a sponsor. Right. I mean, there is places and yeah. and businesses who are interested in it and I was yeah. just wondering if we can do something like that. We certainly can. You know, and and put already, the money towards fact, the coloring books. As a matter of fact, I've already made a list of people that I think would be interested that I was going to discuss it with okay. after I talked about an amount well, that people might be interested in contributing to get on that page. Okay. Uh, second thing was the Children's Week. I guess we got, we're just about out of costumes. Yeah. It was a, a great was year. Fabulous. So was we wonderful. have to stock up on that. Yeah. 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 That's great. Oh, that was fabulous. It, it was wonderful. I have, I still have some in the shed. <laughs> I kept some beside behind. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
And it's well lighted. <laughs> I cannot get in touch with Tim in Washington, D.C. for the wall. I've been trying to get in touch with him. He has not returned my phone call, but I know they're out on the, on the road right now. So I keep trying. How long do I have before I have to send him? July 30th. Um, Janu January, uh, December, December 31st. 31st. They should be done by October 15th, Columbus Day weekend. They're usually done being on the roads. And you wanted this, uh, Chuck, you wanted the dates the week before Labor Day and the week before that, correct? Yeah. Right. All right. That's all I have to say. Yes. <clears throat> and I just want to mention one thing about what Uta just talked about. The I had talked to Uta about the um, the wall, right? And back we had a, a uh, Warren article right. back in 2015, yeah. and you may remember that back in December of last year, the commission has made a motion to carry that money over because the original Warren article. Um, didn't say non-lapsing. Now, I mentioned to Uta the other day when I bumped into her that when we get to the end of this year, you can only do that for one year. So, if, if we exactly, we may have to make another warrant article if if she can't get a hold of them in time. Okay. Just as it just goes back into the general, it would go back in the general fund as of December thirty first. Okay. Okay. Sorry. No problem. Hi, I'm Paul Raitano, uh, Six Fellows Ave. Uh, first of all, I just want to congratulate you guys on a really great summer. I mean, the, the beach was hopping all summer long. And, um, I mean, everything that, that went, the bands were great and everything else. My only question is, the, for the seafood festival, why are the residents charged to get into the seafood festival? Okay, so we don't do the that. Seva Vessel is not the village district. It's the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, you don't? Oh, we okay. We have nothing to do with it other than we support it. All right. And um, we can go to them and say, I, I personally think that they should have a weekend pass that's reasonable for residents of I the absolutely Vessel. agree because... You know, maybe 10 bucks for all three days yeah. or something like that. But you, you have to understand... The cost of putting on the seafood festival isn't what it used to be, setting up a few tents. Right. No, I understand that to, also. They had the infrastructure that had to be put in of the, the gas lines, the electrical system, yep. and, and, and the police, the fire. And, and I don't know if anybody knows, and I, and I really have to give um, both chiefs a lot of credit. Um, um, Chief Sawyer and Chief Ayotte, did, you didn't see all the stuff that was going on. But well, the presence was, was the presence, the presence was, there. was there, though. But there it was, was obvious, people so. that you didn't even know were there. Yeah. There was there was barriers on every street, so cars couldn't get through. I don't know yeah. if you saw any of that. Oh, yeah. There, there, there's stuff I don't want to talk about yeah. that I didn't think about until I was told about it. Um, they did an amazing job, but that costs money. So right. they they do charge for this thing. I don't think we should get it for free, but I don't think it should be as excessive. Yeah. So I think if they said, all right, if you're a resident and you gave $10 for the three days, or if you have a property, you don't have to be a Hampton resident, but a property owner of the beach, maybe that's something that you could talk, we, I can talk to the, the chamber about or, or something, because there's, I got a lot of calls about it, people are all upset. Well, I think you get a lot more, I think you get a lot more of, a, of the residents themselves going up there. I you know my wife and I went up on Friday, but after that, we didn't go up again, because it was 10 bucks the second day and eight bucks the third day. And uh, one other thing, and then I'll, I'll, I'll stop, but. I have some friends that live on, on Hobson. They went out to the beach on Friday. Three o'clock, they decided they want to go up and have a late lunch. They wanted to go to the sea catch. They charged them five bucks each to get to. And didn't so they, even open until 10 at 5 o'clock. have to tell them, I'm not going into the festival. I'm going. They did. Yeah. They but said, I mean, well, if you want to go to the restaurant, you got to pay the $5 to get to the gate. Yeah, and they're not supposed yeah, to do that. The, no, they, I, no, that's no, the sure. first case that I've heard. I've yeah. heard of it in the past, but I haven't seen I it now. And this year at all. Yeah, well, I, I know for a fact that it happened to him because, he, I mean, he told me about it. He was, you know, he was pretty upset about it. He wanted to go for lunch with his wife. and Right, because it's a state, it's a state yeah, it's beach. A state you can't. Beach. Yeah. They can't. You, they can stop you from going into their tents and everything else. And, yeah. and I have guests that we're in the middle of it. 
and they do they do the tents one day they buy the, the the wristband the other time they're there they're sitting on the porch they're watching the people yeah uh, they're going to sea catch they're going to the McGurk's I had one guest say I gotta go to McGurk's but I don't want to have to pay to get back and I said just show them your room key yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know that type of thing so um, but you know again I, I think it was a fair, it was our first full year summer here and it was it was really a great summer I'm good I'm glad to hear congratulations that. to all of you thank you mm, yes yeah. Terry uh, no there. Some places have given some people a yellow band. Those are vendors. No, these were not vendors. They were not vendors. They That's were people that band. were staying yeah. in certain hotels, which I was at a gate, and I did, we didn't know anything about these yellow bands. I don't know if you knew anything about them, but... They used to have yellow bands for, for, all, for three the, days. That's three correct. days for the vendors. Those these that, were not vendor bands. These were not people that were vendors. They were staying they were, in. Well, those are the bands. Places. Those those were my bands. I was charging three dollars. <laughs> 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 he got them from Ray. Band. That, that's why we have him as our treasurer. You say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Only kidding. No, I, and I think it should definitely, I think they should do something for residents. And they, they used to have Fridays were free for residents years yeah. ago. So, um, but they have a, they have big expenses. It's not. And also, after 9-11, didn't the insurance, isn't that exorbitant now? I mean, everything is, that's something they have to consider I've, I've as well. I've seen the cost of the stuff. Yeah. And if we have. Do the vendors pay to come in? They do, yeah. yeah they do, okay. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Do they pay a lot? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's, yeah. As long as the subject has opened up. I think, you know, like you mentioned, uh, you know, it's a big expense to put this thing on. And it is done by the Chamber of Commerce. But I think people are a little, I should say, resentful. But when they see that price go up, I think if the Chamber was a little more transparent in telling people what it's costing to put this thing on, and also maybe. <laughs> I know they don't have to reveal it, how much they took in, and you know, like a balance sheet. And I think that people would be a little more receptive to know that <clears throat> X amount of dollars went to the Knights of Columbus or whatever. Veterans uh, groups. They give a lot of money to the charities. But that's the point. But the people don't know that. All they see is, I'm paying 10 bucks for what? Why am I paying $10 to go spend my money? And if they were a little more transparent with... <coughs> Well, this event costs X amount of dollars. We take in X amount of dollars, and we turn over so much money to this charity, to that charity. I think people will be a little more respect receptive to the whole venue. That's just my, that's oh, I my agree. opinion. I what agree. I hear other people talking about. However, also, just a point. Also, people don't pay for parking. When you stop well, and think of it. Again, if, if that was brought out a little right, more strongly, exactly. that, you know, they're, one of the ex biggest expenses true. is the, sh the cost of the it's shuttle buses. Exactly. But if people would, if there was a little more transparency, I think people would kind of realize, well, yeah, you know, it is a big event. It is an expense, and well, okay, I have no problem paying the 10 bucks. Just just, a, just an opinion. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I think it I should think be out there. And I've seen a lot of the expenses, but I, and they do take in a lot of money. But if we have a bad year, and it rains every single day, and they get nothing. You still have to pay everything. So, uh, and, and I think they take an insurance policy out for part of it. I don't know if they still do that. But, they do, uh, and it was only Sunday from twelve to three, and Sunday from twelve to three was fine. Yeah, <laughs> that's how you get tucked. Yeah, I mean you can't. As an example, I started the seafood festival. I ran it for the first ten years. My tents were fifteen thousand dollars. Docks are ten times that. Oh yeah, very. It's over a hundred thousand. That number just I heard tents. was a hundred and fifty thousand dollars just for the tents. Okay. So I mean, that's an example how the expenses right. are grown. Okay. And the chamber needs the money. That's the only way they're going to survive. Right. I mean, if you expect them to provide the services to the community year round, then you need to support the events that that, that they're managing. They're not going after tax dollars. Maybe there's a happy medium somewhere. Well, I think I think there is room there. Yeah, but I mean, uh, but it is an hour event, so don't get mad. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I was, I was, I was, I was, <laughs> just, I was just, I was just basically making a statement. And I like the idea of a ten dollar, you know, weekend coupon for, for the residents. I think that would be a great idea. Getting <laughs> <laughs>
There's mumbling out there. <laughs> Any other closing comments? No, wait. Public comment. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. Did you do public comment? Oh, Come on I'm up. still on public. I mean, any other public comment? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm changing the subject. Okay. Um, my name is Helen Stanton. I live on Brown Ave. I mean, uh, off of Brown Ave, uh, Diane Lane. Mm -hmm. And we're very concerned in our area about coming down Brown and around the bend there. And before we were able to cut through where the parking lot is now, there's no access to get off the road at that corner there. And it's really treacherous when you're walking. My husband walks with a cane. And, and going around the, by the police station, you mean that, that coming, curve? We're coming down from Diane Lane, which is around the corner here. Mm, I knew it is. And just to come around the corner there, either side of the road there, yeah. it's treacherous. And we, like I said, before we were able to cut through the where the condos house. are and where the, the parking lot space. was, and that's all closed off, and there's no access without walking on that road. You, you can, a, a number of people, you, you can go down, the, I call it the alleyway. You know where the old nightclub used to be? Yeah. It's right called, you can't go down there anymore. No, you can't. Yes. <coughs> yes, you can. You can go down that driveway, and you can cut in. Around that metal barrier? Right. With a cane, and, a, and my daughter comes up with the carriage, baby carriage. Right. You can't get in there that way. I mean, I, I know a number of people were doing that. Do and I can, I'll explain to you what happened is that used to be open. Right. And last year, we had two insurance claims because people were going through with carriages and other things and bagging the cars that were in the parking lot there right and that's why that black fence was put up from the edge of the road to the edge of the building on brown ave and it was done at the advice of our insurance people because it was a liability on the part of the precinct if we continued to let that happen i think the best thing for the people in you're the second person I've talked to in the last couple of days about this, yeah. is to petition the town to put a sidewalk in. There is plenty of room to put, tried, a, side, yeah. <laughs> to put a sidewalk in. I think you, you have a case that it is a hazard. And it my is. understanding is when they were going to build the fire station, or when they built <laughs> this fire station here, they were supposed to put in a sidewalk on on the right. other side of, they were. of Brown, Brown Ave, and I don't know what happened to that. So that's, I'm at the wrong place. I should be at the select yes. place. Yes. Yes. And usually the selectman rep is here, and she called me. She couldn't come. Pardon? Uh, usually the selectman rep, uh, Regina, is here. She called me. She couldn't come. Uh, so I'll, I'll talk to her about it, see what she thinks, and it's I would definitely. On the, on the west side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're closest yeah. to you. Yeah, close. So west side, you know, when you make mm -hmm. how they make that, that there turns. was enough. There's right. enough room there on the west on the west side, and it, to go right along by the uh, side of the uh, police station. To go right Even if you can get to the line. police station, you could cut through the police station and cut through the parking right. lot because right. there's a walk. Yeah, right and once you get once you get beyond that curve, there's you can there's get, a, you can the get there. It's dirt. You can walk on the dirt off the pavement. Is there anything we can do on our side? <coughs> you can move the metal barrier. Yeah. We're talking okay. of, you know, shortening up our, I mean, if the town would build a sidewalk, we can give up some of our, there's that metal barrier, barrier. for the car, you know, so cars, when they go around that corner, we can move it in a little bit. We look. That's got to be uh, the, the beach's Sunday worst <laughs> corner. It's really yeah, is. That's terrible. a dangerous it corner. Is a bad, it is a bad. real it bad. Is. Yeah. It is. One of my neighbors was walking the other night. He's sorry he wasn't able to make it tonight. And a, a car just just barely missed him. He had to jam his brakes on, and he had to come back. And he has problems with his knees. He said he was very fortunate he didn't get hit. Mm. Really need to put a sidewalk. In that. yeah, that's the town needs to do. A Maybe sidewalk. there's something we can do in the meantime. Can we move can it we? for not for until they do that? Until they get a sidewalk? Can we move? It'd be it nice to have it done in the spring. Belong, that belongs to the town, so you have to really work that, with the town. I will show me, and I'll talk to them. You know the big. The big <laughs> I know. I'll, you and I can take. A you can tell me ten things, I'm, and I'll think I got it. So. And Regina Barnes <laughs> is the well, representative. The other thing Select is, that's Regina why we'll talk to her. Regina Barnes. Okay. And we will talk on that.
There's no lights. There's no lights on that street. And it's very bad during the day. But we could it light is. that it's area. Time. We could light that area. Yeah. We got extra light on down at Tuttle, and uh, fellows will take one of those. Uh, that's a good idea. That'll go all the way up to the power plant. <laughs> It is dangerous. Mm. All right, thank you. I'm running a gentleman. I live down off of that block. I have the same problem. We have nine grandkids, and we're up here all summer. And since they closed that where the Royal is, we're cutting through there. You walk around the outside there, and cars, I almost had two cars collide because the guy, you know, the car coming down Brown Ave, heading towards the beach, uh, pulling over, right. almost a collision. And I brought to the attention a year ago. And the town's been notified about this. And since they've been notified, they're open for a suit. The same thing, he says insurance. You don't have enough insurance if someone gets hit there. It's brought to your attention. It's dangerous. There's no way for the people down here to get to the beach. We pay taxes. We expect a sidewalk there. You put sidewalks in all over the town except for down here. I'm not from, I don't represent the town. No, he represents us. No, you're, you know, you're talking insurance. I, I hope no, they have enough insurance. We're insurance for us, not for the town. Right, so... No, but I hope again, they have enough insurance if somebody gets hit. So, and again, we can be no, the no, conduit to talk to the town about it. Right. So, we now that you brought it to our attention, yeah. we'll talk to the town about it, and hopefully we can go, get somewhere. Why don't they change that to uh, Daytona Way rather than Brown Ave? <laughs> you know, it's a joke. 500. No, I, get, I walk my dog down into the street, Diana or Joanna, off of Badcock, and I go, geez, we can make a fortune here. Put a clap there. You know, cars going down there 45, 50 miles an hour. Speed limit is 25. Yeah, I know it is. It is. Yeah, I don't do 25. I do 50 and 20 going down through there because there's kids running around. But the main thing is that you have uh, cop cars have passed me going down, going around that bend. And, you know, they don't see the problem there. You know? The town needs to do something. Yeah. No, it's bad before someone gets killed. Yeah, I agree with you. We'll definitely bring it up to the attention. I was going to talk about this. Please. Yeah, but I have something else. As a res, well, I own property here, and I'm down here six to seven months. And we're not allowed to vote in any of the precincts things. I can understand town because we're not a legal residence. But why can't we have any say in the precinct where we pay precinct taxes? Well, we have our meeting, and, and it's just state law. You have to be a resident of the district. And you, you're welcome to change your residency to here. I don't know what your situation is. But every year at our meeting, and any meeting here, we allow everybody that's a property owner to speak. We allow people coming off the street to speak. And, and I know, we speaking. Will, but we will look into any issue that affects the village district. But it's a state law. It's nothing we can do. We can't say, all right, well, you can vote because you have a house there. And it, it have to be changed at, at, in the state level. Okay. And just so that you know, these three commissioners represent you. Even though you don't have a vote, they represent you. That's I know. We will, I, we will. But I mean, it. Yeah. I've been here over 51 years now. Yeah. And I mean. And you should be a resident. Your voice here is. is well. Is a, is a, is we don't have a lot of voters, so your vote means something, as opposed to a, a town you're in of 50,000. You're one of 50,000. Yeah, but I've been a resident so much longer there that. And I mean, it's just that now that I know that it's the state law, which I didn't know, yeah. mm. I can understand why. Yeah. Believe me, it would behoove us sometimes to have all of the people that we know who own property in this beach be able to vote. It would yeah. be a wonderful thing, but yeah, we're not able the, to do A lot that. of the businesses yeah. Yeah. live here. And, you know, I mean, the casino is probably the biggest taxpayer in the town of Hampton, yeah. and they don't have a vote. So, I mean, that's... You know, that, that, that's just how it is yeah. with the state. But I do agree, even if they went $15 giving the residents, $5 that's $5 a day. Because, yeah. I mean, we used to get it, and then they used to do two days, they take a dollar off each for Saturday and Sunday for the seafood. All right. You know. And don't say resident now because you want to say property owner. Because <laughs> Pro <laughs> then owner. you'll be really mad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, it, it is something to think about. Yes. All right. Thank definitely. you. Anyone else? Public comment? Yes. Hi, I'm uh, Kathy Silver from the Blue Ocean Discovery Center. I wasn't here in July and August because we were so busy. 
but we're That's closed. Good. Yeah, it's very good. We're closed now. Um, this was our fourth season. We had a very good summer, and I'd like to once again thank the um, residents and the voters of the Hampton Beach Village District for their support. I especially want to thank um, Ham Hampton Beach Village again for putting us on the website. We had a very large number of people who would say to us, before we came to Hampton, we planned out our trip, and you were on there because we saw you on the website. And now we're to the point that people are coming back to us where this is our fourth season. So it was a, a good, good summer. Um, we have very good volunteers. Um, Terry here is one of our, my favorite volunteers. We had um, a big college intern program, um, younger volunteers, high school students. And I guess when we started this, I never thought about what the younger volunteers would get from it. My whole thought was what our visitors would get, which, of course, is education and, you know, we, and we inspire action and all those wonderful things with our visitors. But our volunteers, particularly our younger ones, learn job skills. They learn how to interact with the public. And it's something I, I guess I hadn't really ever thought about, but it's certainly a whole different side of our little nature center. Um, one of the things we did this summer that was different was our beach cleanup program. In the other summers, the, the previous three, we would have a beach cleanup at a specific time of day, and then I would send one of our volunteers out to lead the beach cleanup. And it was not especially successful. This year I came up with the idea of an individually led beach cleanup where if you want to go on a beach cleanup I'll give you all the equipment basically a reusable bag, the gloves, a chart to write down everything you pick up and then when you come back you get a hat and people do anything for giveaway stuff. <laughs> I, but we were very pleased that Aquarian Water Company partnered with us and purchased these hats. This was actually part of their um, environmental awareness day that they had in June. These were left over to begin with, and I said, oh, I can use them. And then we ended up asking them for more. So if you see people with this hat, it's because they cleaned the beach. And it's amazing how what a wonderful success this was. I don't have the number right now because I, I turned in the cards to be tallied, but it was a lot, a lot of people. And they always would say, oh, I feel so good and when, I, when they came back. And it was a very good program. I was really, uh, that was one of our big successes. Um, just because we are closed daily here doesn't mean that we're totally done, not at all. Our tanks are still there, our animals, they are year-round residents of the beach. And they, we have... They can't vote. No, they can't vote. <laughs> but Can they write? <laughs> they, they do eat, though, and we have to go in oh, and yeah. feed, them. To feed them. And I just wanted everybody to be aware that we are very willing to open. We do um, scout events, school events, and we also take our animals to these places. We've got coolers, and we take them away. So they travel. And so we do that. And, of course, we do birthday parties at your place or ours. Um, we are very willing to entertain people on New Year's Eve again. Okay, we just need to discuss the, the details. Um, and we've already, we're in the works of planning another 5K race next June. So um, we, we keep going. Um, we're, <coughs> our naturalists are still working on whale watch boats in Rye and Gloucester. And... Oh, I almost forgot. Um, September is International Beach Cleanup Month, and the New Hampshire Coastal Cleanup this year is September 24th. So you'll see lots of people out cleaning lots of beaches. If you'd like to volunteer for this, you can just go on our website and you can get specific um, places and times. Um, you'll see my high school students tomorrow down here cleaning. And I know there are other schools that come as well. So, and that reminds me, I took a <laughs> summer school class in July into the playground to clean it because you always want data from that. And in the playground, where we have no smoking signs posted everywhere, we picked up in 20 minutes 170 cigarette butts. So 
I don't, my, the students thought that the signs needed to be bigger or we need a, an attendant there to like grab cigarettes out of people's hands. I don't know. <laughs> kids get very incensed. How could they smoke here? You know, the sign says they can't and this is for kids. Those I know. So that, those were the results from that. And um, I think that's it. Again, thank you for your support. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for all you do. All right, any more public comment? Yeah, okay, John. <laughs> Hi, John Kane, Hampton Beach, marketing director. Uh, it's been a great year. Um, you know, one of our slogans is Hampton Beach, a great beach, and a whole lot more. We've got to go more and more and more. Uh, there's so many more events that are coming to the beach that helps us extend our season. A uh, couple of events that we had this year early. Road races are always a big thing. Um, the Hampton Beach Summer Games, I think we all thought that was successful. We can learn from that. And uh, mm -hmm. all the kids had a good time in doing that. And it was something more. And there wasn't a negative feedback from anywhere. This is just great. And anything that's great and for free, it's really great. And that's what Hampton Beach is all about. Um, the town of Hampton, the high school um, people helped out this year. Uh, they did the Hampton Beach uh, wrestling days, which was great. Um, I was a little apprehensive, but I, when I found there, the organization of that event was phenomenal. Uh, they did everything on a shoestring budget. Um, you know, the, the, the outside of the rings where Chuck used to sell those big long tubes, the kids bring in the water. They just put a rope through that and, and made it round so that if they fell on it, it didn't hurt. Uh, the refereeing was top notch. They had top uh, referees. The people that participated uh, were, um, you know, all from the wrestling background. The whole family was a wrestler. Um, I may have said this. I, I think I talked to you individually about this, but it was such a kick for me. Was uh, uh, watching one of the little girls, and I'm I'm talking. To she was this tall, really small, and she's going up against the guy. And that's how it was. It was all weight categories, and um, the little girl did really good. Intense nails a guy down twice. And then the kid got on top, and he slammed her, you know, face first in the dirt, you know, in the sand, crying, da, 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 you know, like a little girl would do. Back oh, my over. gosh, did you just say that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, how, oh, I'm amazed at how exciting this was for you, because this is the second meeting you've talked about. I know, I, so no, it's just I know one it was more thing. So the, the girl just comes back, and she nails the kid, and you should have seen the look at her. It was just like that. <laughs> So yeah. that game always was great. So you got yourself out of that hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know the McCann family from Hampton. They're, they're, they're going to continue to uh, give Winter kind of uh, a lot well, of wins. Yes. Yeah, it was family. a great event. All the ages. There's quite a few children. They're really good. So. Yeah. And everyone came together. So, I mean, that's just one of the, the little things. Again, I know I've talked about volleyball, but when you have volleyball every weekend in a tournament at Hampton Beach, that's a lot of activities that's going on. So, well, was, the biggest thing, I, uh, the biggest crowd, even more than the Continentals draw, is uh, movie night. It just amazes me. It, it is, yeah. It's, Do they uh, play we, at movie night? And then maybe they should. What? The Continental. Oh, I thought you said more movie nights. I'm going up. How many people do you have that help you? You know, um, the people that help me are super. Um, Bill uh, McNeil is a Bobby. Is, uh, Bobby Vashon helps with uh, bringing out the, the music stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan Mills. Uh, Kevin gave me him from the sea catch when okay. I said, hey, I need someone. Good. Uh, this guy wants to be an airborne ranger. I said, okay, you know, because the screen is like 500 pounds. Yeah, I can't I do it. You know, I just look at him and bring over the projection stuff and right. help him set up. But these guys are dedicated towards it. Uh, people love it. They clap. They come up to us and thank us individually later on. So, um, again, it's, it's nothing, and you're only making memories. From that, so that was wonderful. You've already talked about the children's festival. That's just an ongoing thing. You know, everyone pitches in. Everyone has a great time. And again, the the people, I sell out every week, from from my entire life here. Uh, I know my parents used to sell out. Chuck, you probably can back uh, back me up. That is one of the busiest weeks of the year. It's children's clubs. So um, you didn't start it. Yes, I did. <laughs> she started it. Um, it was before me. Oh, don't give me Did you start Children's Week at the Seafood Festival? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love to do it. Two different weeks.
you started Children's Festival, and you really the ancient. That's the start. That was 1921 when it started. Well, you started the modern day children's yeah. festival. <laughs> were, were you at the children's festival? Yeah, I was going to say, I, oh, I, I did really great. At least 75 years. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. He was a judge at the first <laughs> beauty contest. See what you lost control. control. <laughs> All right. Was, <laughs> I have that. I have that. Get that gavel. You don't. Anyways, uh, in going past that, Maureen and uh, Kathy and. Um, Julie did a superb, along with all the staff that went behind it. These are the people that you see, the Bobby Vashons, the, the um, Johns that are doing the music, the Glens that are all running behind the Sound scenes. people. Sound, yeah, well, John, I didn't know all their names. Johnny, John, yeah, Johnny. they won. Um, did a great job. Again, we turned it out. The, the competition was wonderful. It went out there. Um, it's, it's been a great season, but we're not over, you know? Unlike a lot of other places up the road, down the road, you know, their season's over. Our season, you know, has got a good month running. This weekend, we've got Reach the Beach. Uh, a lot of young people will start a cannon and end up down here at Hampton Beach. And they hit the streets after that. They wear the medals. I've seen it, all, you know, for years and years. They give high fives. Um, could be Tommy McGuirk's halfway to St. Patrick's Day That's this weekend. weekend. That would so, be Saturday, so I've heard. It, it's going to be Party City at Hampton Beach again. I've heard it was, it was on. Yeah. <laughs> um, after, after that, we have the Granite State Wheelsmen, uh, which is a great organization, and they fill up. The next weekend, we have the Brain Injury Walk, and then we have the Muddy Nose Race, which finishes up here for the real season. Uh, and again, Columbus Day. Columbus Day. And, and Bob, I was thinking about you all week. I was, I did take the weekend off and did not hang around for seafood. I went up to an island. There wasn't a lot to do on the island, but I did read, um, uh, watch television, and I saw for half an hour an infomercial on your lights. So I'm oh, set with you're that. All set. You got them. Great. Yep. yep. New Year's Eve, we're all set with that. So oh, um, really? Columbus Day weekend, we have the car show, the antique car show. <coughs> No, there's organizations that come and do a real thing. Where are they come going to, the to be? Is, is it Does King? that mean behind a casino, like they do in the spring? Oh. Is it King's Pen? Huh? King's Pen? I don't know. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to find, you better find out. Well, I'll, I'll just go right on the website. Okay. Is that Alliance Club? So, what? No, King's Pen is just a bunch of hot rod guys. They're nice and cool. it's good to walk around it. So, anyways, we've still got three more weeks to go. There's still a lot of businesses still open up. Um, the weather's wonderful, and hopefully everyone come on down. It's a it's a nice atmosphere in the fall. Yes, it is. Sounds good. About it. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. All right. Closing comments. Maureen. No, just thank you all for such a good summer, all the people who helped. We really, uh, it does take a village here, and uh, we all appreciate all of you. And uh, I'm kind of glad to take a rest now. So it, it was very good, though, and thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Bob? I'd like to thank the people who came and spoke tonight. Sharing your concerns with us mm -hmm. starts a process that may benefit everyone. And in, you are a good argument for the continuation of a village district as a political body, because we have access in a way that you may not have individually. So again, thanks. Thank you very much. On that note, at 6.30, 6.30? 6.30, yeah. 6.30, we'll close the meeting. Have a great day.